one of the great um, definitions or characterizations of God in Scripture uh, is that God is love. Moses, when he asked to see the face of God in Exodus 33 and in Exodus 34, we have God uh, in all of his goodness passing before Moses and proclaiming himself uh, to be a God of steadfast love, a God of covenant loyal love, God of Hesed. And throughout Scripture, two things uh, that God requires or calls uh, for from humanity are to love God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So God who is love, which we find in Exodus 34 and God himself describing his own character. And then in 1 John chapter 4, we, we have this simple but profound statement that God is love. Uh, and in 1 John, we find that whoever uh, knows God uh, will love. Uh, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And so the call of God who is love is that we would love God and love one another. We find these pieces coming together uh, in the Old Testament, uh, God's expectation of Israel, God's expectation of his people is that they would love him and of no other gods uh, before him. When we look at the Ten Commandments, we have God's call to uh, have no other gods before him, uh, to not make any idols or graven images in the uh, place of God or in the stead of God, not to take the name of the Lord our God in vain, to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Uh, and, and these are all commands, uh, the one through four, to orient our lives around loving God wholeheartedly. And then the commands that follow are to not uh, to cheat, to, to, to lie, uh, to covet, uh, to murder, uh, to uh, commit adultery, uh, not to sin against our neighbor, uh, but rather to love uh, our neighbor. Uh, Paul in Romans 13 uh, notes that uh, if you love your neighbor, you have kept the law. If you love your neighbor, then you will not steal or cheat or covet or murder or hurt your neighbor. And so love is the fulfilling of the law. We find this also in Mark 12. We have a scribe coming to Jesus and talking about what the great commandments are, or what is, or how would you sum up the commands of God. And Jesus quotes, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. To love your neighbor uh, as yourself. And the scribe says, This is true. You've answered well. And Jesus says, You are not far from the kingdom of God. God is love, and what he calls us to is love. These are two things that Israel struggled to do. They struggled to love God alone, and they struggled to love one another well. Israel is often accused of having idols, of going after the gods of Egypt. We have the account in Exodus where Moses is up on the mount and he's delayed, and they make the golden calf. Uh, uh, which they worship, something tangible, something they can see, and perhaps something they can control. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us that we cannot serve both God and mammon, or God and stuff. We cannot serve two masters. We cannot have two gods. And the same was true for Israel. You will serve God, or you will serve something in the created order. But you cannot serve both. One will be your God. So Israel struggled with this throughout their history. The other thing they struggled with was love of neighbor. There was no justice found in their land. In Jeremiah 7, we have the account of the prophet being put at the gate as the people are entering into the city and entering into worship. They're coming in and saying, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And in, in essence saying, we are the people of God. We are the people of God. And they're rebuked by God through the prophet. 
noting that there is injustice in your land. You are not loving one another. The orphan and the widow are not cared for. The hungry are still hungry. You, you murder, you hate, you deride one another. You do not take care of the oppressed. Go and fix that. Go and love your neighbor. Think of the words of Jesus in Matthew 25. This is a judgment on judgment day. I was hungry and you clothed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was uh, uh, hungry and you fed me. Uh, naked and you clothed me. Thirsty and you gave me drink. Imprisoned and you came to visit me. It's love for one another. In Jeremiah 31, we get a wonderful call. Just let me turn to it for a moment. In Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, we find these words again of the prophet as God is speaking uh, to him. And this is what we read, Jeremiah 31, 31 and following. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, and I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they say uh, to each other or to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. To know, I recall the words of the Shema, which in Hebrew Shema is to hear, but is also to know. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. This is what it is to know God. The day is coming, says Jeremiah, when all people shall know me, for I'll put my law within their heart. Let me turn to Ezekiel uh, chapter 36. In Ezekiel 36, we find uh, this in this powerful passage, uh, these words. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And they profaned his name, by chasing after other idols and other gods. And so God says, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put in you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you and make you to follow my statutes and to be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is the call of Israel to keep the commands of God, to love God with all of their heart, mind, strength, and soul, to love their neighbor as themselves. And through doing this, God will be made known, his holy name revered among you. And the day is coming when God will put his spirit within us so that we may know him, so that we may love him and love one another. The prophet Micah chapter six, there's this fascinating dialogue. Uh, what does the Lord require of you? And it comes down to this, and it is to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It's to love God and to love others, to do what is right, this is what the Lord commands. 
This is what the Lord desires. This comes out in the parable of the Good Samaritan we find in the Gospel of Luke. The man comes to Jesus and they talk about what the great commandments are or how it's summed up or what are the greatest. And it's these two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul and love your neighbor as myself. The religious leader, the expert in the law, wanting to justify himself, says, but who is my neighbor? And then the story of the Good Samaritan is shared, of the man who fell into the hands of robbers and despaired or saved by the Samaritan who was passing by, who binds up his wounds, who puts him on his own donkey, brings him to an inn, takes care of him, bears a burden, of the brokenness of this beggar who's been, or this uh, man who's been beaten and left for dead. And then Jesus asked, who was a neighbor to the man who was beaten and left for dead at the hand of the robbers? And the answer is the one who showed him mercy. And the word mercy is Elios, which is Greek for hesed. The one who showed him the love of God. And Jesus said to the religious leader, the expert in the law, go and do likewise. Go and love with the love of God. For God is love, and those who know God love. And this love we read in 1 Corinthians 13 is patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering, it's bearing, it hopes for the best, it endures. It's gracious and forgiving. Romans 5.5, 5, Paul says that the very Spirit of God pours the love of God into our hearts. The fulfillment of the prophecies in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. So the question for us, and the question I want to look at in the coming weeks, is how do we avail ourselves of this work of the Holy Spirit in making us holy, in sanctifying us, in bringing to life within our being the very love of God, so that we love him with all of our heart, mind, strength, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourself. This is the work of God among us. This is the work of spirit, work of the spirit in our very lives. May the Lord lead us into this, this day, and in the weeks to come to his praise, to the praise of his holy name. Amen.